This is the second part of a two-part series on repairing this upholstered chair. This is a Chippendale style chair and this chair came to me with a broken back rail here. It was broken in two pieces and it was missing the tenons on either end. I took the chair apart, brought it back together again and glued it so it's rock solid. Now my challenge is to put the fabric back on and I'm going to show you how that's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. Now that this chair is rock solid, I can put the upholstery back on. Now you notice I kept the webbing on here. The reason for that is there are seven other chairs that match this. So when I reupholster this, I need to make sure that the feel and the look is exactly the same as the others. So I'm going to be reusing the components. These are the three quarter inch tacks I took out. So I'm just putting those back in at the back here. So now I can stretch the webbing across here. And I don't want to pull it too tight. If I pull it really, really tight, this chair is going to be firmer than the others. So I'm just going to use the old nail hole as a guide here in terms of the distance that should be. So the tack was right there. So drive that in. So those three in, now I fold it over and you can see here there are three more. So this fabric I don't want flopping over, I want it under here. So again, going roughly the same spot as the old nails. Ooh, that went in a little too easily. So I'm just going to put new holes in here so we get a nice firm hold. Here, that's better. The next step is to put the burlap on. So we just put that in place here. And this was held on with tacks. Now, I could put this on with staples, but this is actually kind of fun. The tack hammer is magnetic. So it's magnetic on this end and where the larger head is it isn't. But it's kind of cool to be able to do this. And it's important to stretch out the burlap when you're putting this on. So it's just a matter of driving the tacks in and stretching step by step. The next step is to put on the edge roll and this is what came off. So I just have to match up the pieces. The front edge is here. I'm just going to line that up into the old holes. This doesn't have to be extremely tight. It just has to be secure. And there's some good length nails in there that keeps this all together. So I'll just find the old nail holes there. A couple of them I can't, but I'll just rest this in here and then tack in the rest. This is what gives the front of the upholstery some definition right at that edge, so it doesn't just um, have a tight corner on it. The next layer here is old-fashioned padding and a lot of that's made up of straw wrapped in cotton. 
So this is what today we would use foam for. So what I want to do is just line that up to the edge roll. So we've got a good fit. And then we've got the muslin. Now this is just a very thin fabric and what it's meant for is really just holding everything in place before we start to get the final fabric on. So I'm going to start by tacking that on at the back. And at this point I'm going to switch over to my staple gun. So I'm just going to visually line this up with the holes that are here. That'll tell me where the location of the fabric should be. I'm going to turn this around, align the fabric on the front, and then I'll do the sides. So again, what I'm looking for here is roughly to line up these holes where the old nail holes are. So there's a bit of a stretch here. I want to make sure I've got the corners lined up first before I start stapling. There. And there. Okay, so we're good. Now it comes to a corner like this, you need to tuck it in. So the first part is stapling it here. And then tucking the material in, and you want to bring it around the side as far as you can, because you don't want to staple right on the edge of that wood, because that'll cause it to split. Okay, and then the last piece to go on here is the fabric itself, and the fabric has cotton on the back of it. So again, it's just layering it on and getting it in just the right spot. Oh, I think I've got that backwards. Do I? No, that's frontwards. So this is where you have to be patient to get everything lined up properly. Because here I've got tacks that go on the front and then this wraps around underneath. This is where I've got a critical measurement right in here to make sure I've got a nice tight joint. So what I'll do is line it up here and then staple it underneath. I'll turn this around and what I want to do is line up this other corner and get it set as well. So again, just line it up. I'm using those tack marks here as a guide and then put one staple in. Now I can turn it upside down.
and then I'll use the old staple marks here as a guide just to make sure that those staple marks aren't going to show and I'm getting the fabric in the right spot. Now I'll stand it back up, turn around the front, and again what I need to do is center it. So here there are some tacks that go in on either side, so I need to line up this fabric so I get that lined up perfectly on both sides. So there's the hole from the tack, and here's the mark from the tack head, so I need to line that up and then I can staple it underneath. So over here I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to pull the fabric across this way, help stretch it a bit, and then line up those tack marks and tack it underneath. So now I just have to get a similar tension as to what I've got on the other sides there, and then I can staple it. Now on the sides, I'm going to do a similar thing, make sure I line this up with those tack marks in the wood. Pull that nice and tight. And then at the back here, again, I want to make sure that I line up these marks with the tacks. And pull this over enough and we get a nice tight seam against the wood and then tack it in place. And there's a crease right here. I'm just going to line that up with the edge of the chair and then staple it. With all the tacks on, I can move this aside and we'll work on the dust cover. So as you recall, in the last video, Darren cut off the dust cover. It was really just garbage. So I'm going to cut out a section here, just a rough width of the chair. And this is fabric that's, that doesn't run. So it can have an unfinished edge without an issue. And what I'll do is bring back my workbench protector. Turn this upside down. And then we'll cut it to fit. I'm going to start at the front edge here, fold that over, and then bring it up here. 
And I've got a large edge at the front here, so I'm just going to set it back a little bit and then staple it in place. What I'm going to do now is bring it to the back and I'm going to trim the fabric. So here's the edge. I'm going to bring it over. It doesn't really matter how far over because again I'm going to roll it underneath. So I'll just roughly cut that off. When I get to the legs, what I need to do is cut around here because if I leave that there or even try to roll that underneath, I'm going to end up with a pucker. So what I do is on this back piece here, I'm just going to cut it straight to the corner and then I can roll that piece under here and then I can stretch it out and get a nice tight fit. On the sides here, where I've got this fabric tucked back, and then roll it this way, it can be a bulky part here. So what I do is just cut some of that excess material off to reduce the bulk and get rid of that bulge. So now it's folded here to get a nice finish and then fold it here to get me to the edge and then I can staple it in place. Do the same thing up here. I've got a lot of bulk of material. So I'm just going to cut some of that excess off. I want to leave enough that I can still roll it under. So there's a height difference here and here. So I have to sort of bridge that gap and then pull it tight. We've got a nice upholstered chair and a chair that's rock solid. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like you to consider contributing to Patreon. Our Patreons are over here and they're helping us with our video production work so we can invest more time and energy into making free videos for you like this. If you can give this a thumbs up, it'll help others find our videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here, click on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching, Fixing Furniture. <music>